What's going on guys? So we're gonna be doing a new knife build today. Uh, sketched something up real quick last night. This is kind of a design that I came up with. Now, I kind of ran into some problems with this design because I have two different steels on, on hand. I have a quarter inch thick and I have an eighth inch. And really for a knife of this size, I'd really like something like 3 16 I think. Um, quarter inch on a knife this size would be absolutely insane. It would probably, this knife would probably weigh close to a pound if I made it out of uh, quarter inch thick steel. I don't have any way of really tapering the tang real, real well without spending like a month on it. So I think quarter inch is gonna be out. Now the other steel I have is eighth inch and the problem with eighth inch with this design, at least a, a grind line at this high is that I think if I brought the grind line up this high, it'd thin out the edge too much and it would weaken the very edge of the knife. So what I may end up having to do is bring this grind line down uh, more like a Scandi grind. I think that would leave enough material, or I knew that would leave enough material on there so I can really do some serious work with this blade and uh, kind of go from there. I may end up changing this blade shape as I go. Uh, we'll just have to see. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Just barely fits on there. All right guys, so it's actually a couple days later and I know I kind of like skimmed through the first half of this video and didn't show much, but the reason for that is because I wanted to focus a little bit more on the second half of this build. So now I want to test this blade before I end up putting a $20 set of scales on it and spending another three days on it. Secondly, the bevels on here, I think are going to be a little bit thin if I continue to work these um, more towards like a Scandi grind where I take it down with no secondary bevel. So I think what I'm going to do is put a secondary bevel on the, uh, on the edge of this blade. Not only is that going to make it I'm gonna take this outside and test it, and hopefully the edge doesn't break, hopefully the knife doesn't break, and uh, we'll kind of see what this is capable of before we spend any more time on it. That's a piece of oak, solid. All right, so let me see if I can bring in the light here. Let's see how well this shows up. So I don't know how well you can make that out, but we do have a little tiny bit of edge deformation there. Um, it looks like chipping. Um, the edge didn't roll, but it looks like we have a couple little chips in there. 
Now, I don't really know the exact angle that this is sharpened at, but it's fairly steep. This is only eighth inch thick steel. And honestly, I think that if I reprofile this edge and put slightly less of an angle on it, I don't think I'd have that edge damage. This is a fairly thin edge on here. Um, I don't know the exact degree. I would probably guess in the neighborhood of 20 degrees. Maybe I'll put it on the Lansky uh, when I get back and uh, kind of get a better idea for what this angle is. You actually, you're not gonna believe this, but let me show you this. So this Lansky is supposed to be accurate if the edge of the blade is 5 eighths of an inch away from the jaw. At least that's the way I understand it. So this is at 20 degrees and you can see that we're below 20 degrees. So our angle on this knife is steeper than 20 degrees. Now let's go to 17. And it's still at 17 degrees. This angle is still a little bit steeper than 17 degrees. 17 degrees is extremely steep and uh, we were hacking through oak. That's actually really surprising. I, uh, I'm honestly surprised that we didn't get any worse edge shipping than this. I knew this angle was gonna be steep because it's only eighth inch thick steel. Um, and this is, a, this is a very wide bevel. You know, this is also one of those things where it kind of goes to show you the performance that you can get out of simple carbon steels. I mean, this is 1080 steel. This isn't any type of super steel or anything. And uh, we can hack through an oak log at an angle less than 17 degrees without any major damage. We'll put it that way. We do get edge damage going on, but honestly, if we sharpened this to where we reprofiled this blade to 20 degrees, you wouldn't get any of that. The reason that I know that is because I've done it before on other knives. Some of the other knives I've made have been around 20 degrees, um, even steeper than 20 degrees, maybe around 18 or 19 degrees, um, and they've still been able to hack through stuff no problem. So it's kind of amazing the performance that you can get out of simple carbon steels. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave this. Um, I can always resharpen it later. I can always uh, reprofile the blade later. So I'm gonna leave it as it is and do some testing with it. I mean, the nice part about making newer knives is that you can pretty much do whatever you want to them. Try and push the performance of certain steels and certain blades. All right guys, so it's actually a couple days later and we had a serious cold front come in. We are literally getting like 50 mile an hour winds right now, which is insane. So I apologize for the wind noise if you can hear any. So this is kind of where I'm at with the build so far. Got the scales cut out, everything's basically ready to be glued up. But what I want to do right now is I have a lot of excess around here on the scales. I want to kind of cut some of that off now so I don't have to do it later. It's also going to allow me to see if there's any gaps when I go to uh, epoxy this up and clamp it together. So I'm going to try and get as much of this excess off as possible. Now, now the saw that I'm going to use to go ahead and cut these down is a tile wet saw. Luckily, I already had a tile wet saw and I've tried it before. It works fantastic on G10 and micarta. It also doesn't produce hardly any dust because it's wet and the dust kind of gets trapped in the water. So that's also a really nice bonus. So I got everything cut out. Now it's ready to glue up. I'm going to take this inside and glue it up inside where it's warm. Let it sit up overnight and hopefully tomorrow we'll get to the fun stuff and start shaping the handle. Man. I don't know if you can hear that, but that had to be, that had to be a 60 mile an hour gust right there. So I went inside to epoxy and as I was cleaning the pins and scales, the power went out and I had to wait another day to epoxy everything. I've said this once and I'll say it again, I really like the slower setting epoxy. It's so nice to not have to worry about the epoxy hardening as you're still halfway through your glue up. You can really take your time making sure everything has coverage. I'm just using regular old rubbing alcohol to wipe up the squeeze out. It works fairly well and isn't super toxic like other solvents. Alright guys, got the handle all epoxied up. Now it's time for my favorite part, 
probably everybody else's favorite part too, shaping the handle. This is where you take something that looks like it should be thrown away and turn it into something that looks like it should be kept forever. So the uh, camera that I'm using is the Sony a6300 and it's not dust proof. The lens isn't dust proof and I really don't want to ruin it. So my phone is supposed to be dust proof and from what I can tell, it practically is. I think I need to get a GoPro or something because something with a little bit better image stabilization because for some reason the vibration from the sander transfers up through the tripod and into the camera and it makes the footage from this look all All right, guys, that's it for the bushcraft chopper. At least I guess that's what we're calling this thing. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.